So the idea was that we provide a really safe space for a child, a young child, who has been traumatised to come and deal and learn and make sense of the trauma that's happened to them. You never know what's going on with people around you and often the children are unable to communicate what's actually happening inside and what's impacting their lives. To allow that communication to come out through play is very, very powerful and has a significant impact on both the child and on the family. It's essential that we continue to fund um, assistances and supports to children um, because if they're left unchecked and they become long-term serious mental health problems and that's just not good enough. At the time I just took it as it is. It, it happened and I obviously couldn't stop it from not happening so um, I just had to try to be the most positive I could be. After the first round of chemotherapy, they deemed Jack high risk and decided that the best way to cure him was to send him for a bone marrow transplant. So at that point, they tested both my daughters, Ava, who is now 10, and Addison, who's now seven. Both were matches, which was a godsend, and they opted to have Ava as the bone marrow donor. I was really, really happy that both those sisters cared for me so much and how they both really wanted to help save my life. I'd say one of the biggest casualties of, of the year was Addie changing completely as a different child. She was such a confident, outgoing little girl and she was so clingy and scared and insecure. And Ava, Ava was okay and she helped look after Addie, but I think they both missed having their mum around. Moving it out and then crumpling it up again. It, it took a couple of weeks at first, they were a bit tentative, but they had the most amazing play therapist who really cared for them. Addie started first, and then we thought Addie was getting so much out of it that maybe Ava could come. I think that it was just the freedom of them going, getting to do, like playing and letting all that stress just die down was really good for them. The Bee Centre is one of the most phenomenal um, opportunities for children to come along and work through whatever kind of trauma they might be dealing with. They were just happier and especially over the time they you know, just seemed to get more in touch with where they were at. I think the children see enormous benefit and you can see that on their faces and the way they interact with the therapists. I think the other thing I've noticed is the families, the mums and dads, you can see a weight being lifted off their shoulders and that's, that's tangible. Quite often we don't know, the parent doesn't know something's happened. All they know is that the child's behaviour has changed. But in the play therapy room, that will come out. Whatever has happened to that child will come out naturally in their play without a therapist going, tell me about what's wrong. Because a three-year-old, a five-year-old, even an eight-year-old quite often doesn't have the words. You're playing sport again? Yes, I'm playing sport a bit again. Um, Doing your homework again? Exactly. <laughs> It's cool, Captain, yeah. Cool. And how is family life? Is it sort of back on an even keel now? Is it running all right? Um, it's still a bit busy, but it's um, obviously as normal as it was when before I was diagnosed. As normal as your sister's driving you now insane? <laughs> is that right? Uh, they've always been driving me insane. There's nothing to uh. there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty special people here though, aren't they? So special, so kind and thoughtful and generous and the donors and the people who sponsor everything. I mean, we're just incredibly grateful. Thank you.